Hello everybody and welcome to our lesson for today. Thank you for being with us. My name is Daniel with Aspire Global Leadership Consulting and we have been going through some lessons on several topics in life and today we will continue with the same talking about vision or being a visionary. Now a vision has something to do with if you may, a dream or something that hasn't happened yet. And that is what we will be talking about today and talking about what does it take to be a visionary. And for us to talk about what it takes to be a visionary, you have to know who a visionary is. So let's ask ourselves, who is a visionary? The dictionary description or definition of a visionary is someone who <clears throat> is thinking about or planning the future with imagination or wisdom. Now our goal is to be leaders wherever we are, whether it's in the workplace, whether it's in the home, or the different places where we interact with people, we need leaders and we need visionary leaders. So that is to say we need people who can lead others while thinking and planning the future with imagination and or wisdom. Let's not say just imagination or wisdom, but it's more of a mix of both imagination and wisdom because it takes wisdom to lead others. It takes imagination also to craft that future that will be beneficial to everybody. So what are the characteristics of a visionary leader? And what does it take to be a visionary leader? One thing is they have to have a vision. For anyone to be a visionary leader, obviously you cannot spell visionary without vision. So they need to have a vision. They need to have a dream. Think about any group of people that you're leading right now. When they look at you, can they tell that you have a vision? Do you have a plan for the group? And is that plan, is that vision, is that dream something that will make the group better in the long run, cohesive in the short run, and just gel in general? Can people rally behind your vision? Think about any leaders in the world right now. Whoever your leader is or whoever the leader that comes to mind is, can you say definitively that they have a vision, that they have a dream? And are they living that dream? We see a lot of political manifestos. We see a lot of politicians come up with what they say is their plan. Then once they get into office, they forget about the people who got them there or they start thinking about next time I get into office or next, the next campaign cycle or the next election cycle and how do I benefit from there rather than what was the vision. Now when you have a vision, you're told to make it plain, put it in writing because when you put it in writing, it will be a reminder for you that you need to act on it. And number two, it creates a sense of accountability because people will be able to look back and ask themselves, is this still the vision? Are we still living out the vision? Are we still going towards the goal that we started out with? So the number one characteristic of a visionary leader is they have to have a vision or a dream. And they have to make it clear to a point where those following know what the plan is know what the vision is. Number two characteristic of a visionary leader is that they have a plan. The vision is one thing, the plan is another thing. In between is what a leader does. So if I plan to climb Mount Everest and I am here in Raleigh, North Carolina, there has to be some planning involved, whether it's getting the necessary travel arrangements and documentation that's needed 
or whether it's physically training to be able to withstand the extreme conditions while climbing, but there has to be a plan. So after that leader has laid out his vision, then he lays out what do we need to do? Who do we need? What does it take financially? What does it take physically? What does it take in terms of manpower for us to accomplish that vision or that dream? Wherever you are, you are a leader in your own right. And you have a vision. Now, do you have a plan? And can you surround yourself with people who will be able to assist you in executing that plan? The best plan left on paper is nothing but just some pretty drawings. But once it is executed, the worst plan executed is better than the best intentions that are left undone. So do you have a plan for your vision? The third characteristic is that they are willing to pay the cost. One of the leaders that I really admire is Nelson Mandela. And talking about the fight for equality and the fight to end apartheid. I will rephrase here because I don't remember the exact quote, but he talked about the belief that all men are equal and all men have rights as free men. And he said that is an ideal that I want to live for, but if necessary, I am willing to die for. So he was willing to pay the cost. And for him, that cost was 27 years behind bars. But he saw it to fruition. So are you willing to pay the cost? Because the road will not always be easy. Sometimes you might strike it lucky and you are road is smooth flowing all the way to the realization of your vision but more often than not it will be filled with potholes it will be filled with stumbling blocks it will be filled with obstacles are you willing to pay the cost and usually when talking about visionary leaders their vision usually outlasts them we know about the Nobel Peace Laureate Wangari Mathai and her passion for trees and planting trees and the Green, Green Belt Movement, I believe, was the name of the campaign. And yes, she won the, uh, the Nobel Peace Prize because she suffered a lot in the realization of that vision, but that vision has not been completely accomplished. Right now in the world, we are still talking about global warming. Right now, in different areas of the world, we are still dealing with effects and issues to do with deforestation. Right now, we hear all these campaigns about climate change and how it's real and how it can be reversed. Yesterday, I read somewhere that global warming can be reversed, but we will need to plant forests the size twice the size of the United States. Now, will that be realized in our lifetime? Probably not. But does that mean we just sit back and continue towards the path to destruction? Absolutely not. The vision usually outlasts the visionary leader. But they work at it. Can you be that leader? What is your plan? What will you be remembered for a hundred years from today? Will you just be another footnote in history? Will you be a forgotten figure in history? Or can people look back a hundred years from today and spell out what your vision was? Martin Luther King had a dream and that dream cost his life. That dream was realized or arguably it's still being realized or in the process of fruition. But we can attest that we are far 
closer to the realization of that dream than when MLK spelled out that dream in the 60s. The vision outlived him. The question you ask yourself is, are you willing to plant trees whose shade or fruits you will never get to enjoy? When you're willing to do that, you become a visionary leader because you start acting not out of your own selfish ambitions, but for the common good of everybody. Maybe it's our children, maybe it's our children's children who will see the realization of that vision. But let me submit to you that the rewards are plenty. The rewards are available even right now. Right now, I'm enjoying the fruits and sitting under the shade of what my parents and my grandparents planted. My grandparents, out of the four, only one is still living. But they can see the fruits. Even when they're not here, the fruits are still being manifested. The same thing, when we are long gone from this world, will our vision live on? Can we outlive our vision? Because that is the mark of a true leader. Thank you everybody for listening to us. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's Aspire Global Leadership. And also like us on Facebook, follow us for these and many more tidbits as we continue on our series on becoming the leaders that the world needs. Thank you very much and we will talk to you later or at our next recording. Thank you.